Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and today's video is going to be on this Douyin makeup look. I've been seeing this like trending contour technique and it's almost like you're sketching a photo. So if you want to see how I got this look and get ready together, then just keep watching. Okay, I'm not sure what type of look we're going to do today, so I'm just going to start with the base. SPF, of course, this is the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. This has also made it onto my list of top favorite products that I would buy for everybody in the world if I were a billionaire. So all of this, it looks like it's enough SPF, like it covers my entire face, but this actually was only one finger's worth of SPF. So always make sure you're applying it on both fingers so you know that you're actually applying enough. My skin, honestly, has been looking really good lately. Next, let's do foundation. I've been really into this foundation recently. I never heard of this brand before they sent it to me, but it's called Dinto. It does have a very sheer consistency, so I'm going to mix it with my concealer. I also asked you guys over on Instagram to send in any topics or questions you wanted me to talk about today. It's been a really long time since I've done a Q&A, so our first question. A lot of these actually have to do with content creation. When did you decide to start taking content creation seriously? My dad got me a Canon camera, the Rebel T6i, for Christmas. And so January 2017 was when I uploaded my first video. It was the New Year's Eve Get Ready With Me. And my channel took off pretty quickly. After graduating, I actually got a, a job offer in LA and it would require me to move to LA. It was kind of like being a full-time YouTuber, but under a company. I was essentially just working for a company and because it was like halfway a traditional job and it wasn't as risky as becoming a full-time YouTuber right away, my parents decided to just let me do it. So late 2018 is when I started taking my YouTube channel more seriously and that's when it became a full-time job for me. Next I'm going to apply my blush. Wow, look how fast the autofocus was. I'm using a new camera I got from Canon. This is the EOS R50, so thanks to Canon for sponsoring this portion of the video. I cannot believe I just said that. I have been a Canon girl since the start of my channel, like literally I just told you guys. The first camera I started with, I still use to this day to film makeup tutorials. Like almost all of my videos are filmed on that camera. I got that camera six years ago and it's such great quality even by today's standards. And then I also have a vlogging camera that's from Canon, but this new camera I have today is the Canon EOS R50, which is basically the perfect combination of those two. This entire video is shot on the Canon EOS R50 by the way. They sent me two of them so I could show you a size comparison. This is me with the Canon EOS R50. It's such a compact camera that has such great quality. Because this camera is a lot higher quality than just a point and shoot or your phone. Like it can blur the background you can see, which for me is really important for beauty videos. It has that really nice autofocus and also one thing that I really like about this camera is the colors. There are a lot of cameras where you have to do a lot of color grading to get it to look decent, but Canon cameras always have really nice colors that are accurate to real life, which is really important for me personally because I do a lot of makeup videos, so I want the colors to translate well. When you're getting a camera as a beginner, you don't want to have to worry about color correcting, right? Like, you're putting so much money into that camera, the camera should be doing that work for you. So I really love how beautifully the colors translate. Also, it's so easy to use. So I'll actually walk you through my settings. First, I switch it to movie mode and then select manual exposure. Then if I'm recording myself, I'll flip out the viewfinder so I can see myself. And then I'll adjust the ISO, f-stop to get the blurry background, and shutter speed. And that's it, that's all I do before I hit record. I think if you're planning on getting a camera that you want to be a long-term investment that you're gonna be using for a long time, this would be it. It's easy enough to use as a beginner, but it has certain features that you would be able to use over the years to maximize usage, like being able to change out the lens. That's something that as a beginner, you think like, mm, I'm never gonna use it, but when you're like, actually using the camera for a really long time. You wanna get different footage results, you just wanna experiment with the camera. That's a really nice feature to have. The camera also comes in a content creator kit which includes everything you would need. It has the camera, the kit lens, the stereo mic, and a tripod, which I'm using all of those today so you can hear the audio that's from the stereo mic. The content creator kit, I think anybody can use it since it just has everything you need, but it's specifically really useful to entry-level creators who are looking to upgrade from their phone or their first point and shoot camera. As a creator that's starting out, using your phone is really useful because it's like you already have it. But if you're looking more long term, a nice camera is a really good investment. I know the film look has been trending for a while now and this camera is really good for that because it's so high quality. When you add filters or you edit to get like the film look, it doesn't lose so much quality and it ends up looking so realistic. 
So if you are interested in getting the Canon EOS R50, I will leave a link in the description box. But other than that, thank you to Canon for sponsoring this portion of the video and let's get back to the get ready with me. So for this Douyin It Girl look I've been seeing, their eyebrows actually, they don't do straight brows. Like they've been doing like upturned almost brows. So I'm gonna try my best. For someone who's starting with social media, how can you deal with mean comments? This is something that kind of is relevant outside of just social media. You're always gonna meet people who don't like you, right? They don't even need to have a reason. They just don't like you. You're not gonna get along with everybody. You're gonna meet people you don't like for no reason too. So I think like just learning to accept that is probably like a key part of becoming a content creator and just like going about your life. There's no reason to go out of your way to appease people who don't like you already. You know, people always say, that you get like a hundred nice comments and then you get one mean comment and you just focus on that one. I really tried not to let that be the case for myself and I think I've gotten really good at it because I have no problem with deleting comments and then it literally just goes out of my head like I just forget it even existed. Another thing that I would highly recommend to anybody who's planning on starting a channel is not to respond to mean comments because I see a lot of people they feel like they need to justify themselves you don't need to go out of your way to explain to them and when you do explain things to them like this you're just reinforcing that behavior I haven't used this on my channel yet it's the napping cheese palette from Clio it's cat themed this shade have you ever lost the motivation to create I definitely have you know how Instagram sometimes it sends you like memories from like six years ago on this day I saw one pop up from 2020 and it was literally a story of me and it was like a screenshot of me editing a video. I had captioned it, I don't feel like filming lately because I feel so ugly. And I've talked extensively about how I was feeling about this before, but I lost motivation in that moment because I was just like, I don't want to be on camera, I don't want to look at myself. I think a lot of people went through that in 2020 and like because of COVID and everything. When you go on dates with yourself, what is your favorite thing to do? So I love taking myself shopping. Um, I don't know, there's something about being around other people but you're alone that makes me happy. I don't know how to describe it, but I just love going shopping by myself. I will say when you do your base first, the products go on so much creamier. This palette. I'm gonna take this eyeshadow from Alicia and set the eyeliner. And then let's do the inner corner. Next, let's do the lower liner. I'm gonna mix these two shades. And then place a shimmer here. I'm getting kind of sweaty and oily, so I'm gonna set everything. So I'm taking a little bit of powder. Start with the contouring the nose normally. I'm gonna like really sculpt it. Next is the interesting part. They bring it down here. It's like you're sketching out the nose. I'm gonna take this shade from Alicia. We're gonna use that to highlight. We're gonna go super heavy with a powder blush. This one is from Revlon and it's so pretty. Look at this. It's like oh. this is from Flower Nose, it's bedtime story. I'm gonna take this shade. This is like white shimmer. I'm gonna use that as a highlighter. I'm just gonna apply like one line, just one strip on the nose. And then we're also gonna use that on the inner corner. Oh my god, I love how this looks. I'm trying to like postpone going back to the eyes because I'm gonna have to do the individual lashes and those are so tedious. But let's do lips next. I'm gonna use a brow pencil to sort of contour the lips. It looks crazy while you're doing it, but you can see now. Like, it just looks like a shadow. I'm using Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum in Rosewood Glow. This is so good if you like the dewy looking lips. Like, let me show you. It, I don't know if everybody would like this formula because it melts really easily. Like, upon 
applying it, it starts melting. It gives you that really nice dewy lip look that has been trending recently. Oh, I love this shade, it's so good. And then I'm actually gonna apply a little bit of lip liner. Curl our lashes and apply mascara. For mascara, I'm using the Dento Dante 1x1 One One Lash Definer in Warm Black. This is a new mascara I've discovered recently and it's so good. It's like a mix of the Etude House Lash Perm Curl Fix and the Clio Long Curling. I like this one because it doesn't dry out your eyes. I know a really popular mascara that's like for Asian lashes is the heroin make one. That one honestly makes my eyes feel so dry. So I prefer to use these. Just add a little bit of egg yourself. Time for the step I've been dreading. Lashes. I don't know, like I hate the process of applying the lashes, but I love how it looks. I always feel so much more confident after I apply lashes. These lashes I got in YesStyle and they're so cute. So I actually use one lash for both eyes. I'm gonna cut it in half. So I cut that one lash into two pieces and I'm gonna cut those in half. Also, please note this only works if the lashes are perfectly symmetrical. So now I have four pieces and then I'm gonna apply the short ones on the inner corners and then the long ones on the outer corners. Fill that in with liquid liner. I'm obsessed with this look. It's so cute and dolly. Like I love the contour technique, but I do think I need to switch out my contact lenses. So let me pick like a suitable one for this look and I will be right back. Okay, I popped in some blue contacts and this is the completed look. I didn't answer that many questions, so I wanna answer one more before we go. Any interesting life updates? How are you doing physically and mentally, emotionally? In all aspects, I feel like I've been doing a lot better than I was in a long time. So physically, mm, I started running again with my dad, but I took a break because he hasn't been home, but I have started again, so I really like it. And then mentally, I feel like I'm a lot more stable, mentally stable than I have been since 2020. What helped me a lot was practicing gratitude, seeing what I do have and what I am grateful for. It just feels more refreshing, it makes you happier as an individual, and it just helps you see everything that is going right. So on that note, thank you for getting ready with me. If you like this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Yeah.